Sometimes it's difficult to connect lessons to college and career and how it's gonna affect you later. Work-based learning does that. It's just more hands-on and it's better than just sitting in class watching videos all day. I think it's really great how they have it laid out for students. They, they make it so easy for us to really get involved in a career path and I really appreciate that. I really think the most important part of companies wherever you're at connecting to the community is you're right, the talent is already here. It's just how do these kids get exposed to these new opportunities? So we're very lucky at Eastside Union High School District because uh, one, we're a fairly large um, district and it's all high school. The other thing is that we benefited from the state's initiative of pushing career technical education at the state level. In terms of work-based learning, we were very lucky um, that we are in Silicon Valley. When we broker those kind of relationships, it's important that the industries are looking into how they can tap into high schools. It just, for us, part of our mission is to have our student graduate college and career ready. And so uh, Link Learning allowed this to happen. Link Learning is a great thing that Eastside is tapping into. I think that because it has so many components that will really help any youth's growth. And it really gets them, you know, wanting to learn more. They're more engaged. And I think that's really important as they go on into their future pathways. I think the STEM Academy definitely made me like know what to expect when I leave high school. Instead of just focusing on my A through G requirements, it helps me like understand like what careers I'll be able to take and be able to have and what classes. Since we have a lot of opportunities to go on field trips to talk to different like professionals and everything. I absolutely think it is a district effort. There is a lot of support and a lot of guidance and a lot of help for the school side and I mean everybody really does have to work together to make it happen. It is incredibly difficult for an individual teacher or even a cadre of teachers or one high school to be able to go out into industry and find um, internship opportunities, especially as they relate to kids in high school. Uh, having been in the classroom, I know that you know your day is only so long and you live by the bell. It won't work systemically if there's not somebody responsible, one person who's sole responsibility for, at the district level to do that. We reach out to community leaders and then we pass it along. Triage, we need you to treat them, right over here. We have patients that need to go to the hospital. So this is a mass casualty incident drill. First responders complete these drills to ensure that when there is a situation that calls for emergency response, especially when there are multiple casualties involved, these are how they practice the rules and procedures um, that they follow. The MCI drill is actually one of my favorite parts of the year because it's like where the whole academy gets together and does something like good. Well, it's important for me because it, like, it could give me a view of if I want to be in the medical field or not. The activity was to give the students an opportunity to see some of the real world activities that take place every day uh, between the different types of responders that are out there in the system um, and incorporate real life scenarios so that the students would be exposed to what is really going to be taking place in an emergency. Maybe we can take one more immediate. Take care. Can you get one more from Blue? We don't have any money. Like I said, with the one ambulance at one location, or we're short staffed with triage, and it's like, yeah, what are you going to do? Like, that happens, and you're going to encounter challenges like that at work. In a real life scenario, like, if this were to happen, I would freak out, obviously, but then being in the class, it made me put my skills to use, and like, if I were to see an accident, I would be able to treat it. Well, this is the center of innovation here in Silicon Valley. The Mineta Summer Transportation Program is an example to do workplace learning. The transportation industry is facing a crisis when it comes to a qualified workforce. This crisis needs to be addressed, and one way we do that is through workforce development initiatives where we get kids in the K-12 sector excited about careers in transportation. So it's all about, for our workforce learning and our workforce development work, it's all about hands-on application work. We have students that are in school all year, 
And it's kind of the, when am I going to use this in the real world? This is why we do a high tech U. This is why we work with Mineta Summit Institute. It's all about application. You're learning these things, you're learning these skills. Let's put them actually into action. Because I think when you get that hands-on learning, you can connect those dots. Hands-on really um, caught my attention. And so being an engineer or building things, it just made me focus more and made me want to be more interactive with the subject. You ready to partner you know, with the data collector and make sure that the settings they have match. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, you might want to redo that. We're layering the incentive for the students. So for that course or that summer event, the student also gets um, college credit from San Jose State. So uh, I did this last year. Um, I came back because it was a great opportunity to get into a job where they teach you about what you want to do in the future. What, um, what career path you want to get into. What has happened in our particular district, they have gone out and sought internships and they've organized it. Then the students can apply at their various schools for internships in their career pathway. They go through a selection process. They go through a little bit of a, um, a training uh, prior to actually being placed. Today we're doing the first training day which is career exploration. They're going to um, kind of explore the career clusters in this area. The, uh, they're going to do a survey of career interests of themselves. And then they're going to explore the employers we have on board for them to select from this year. I was an intern back then. I'm a project engineer now. Uh, I like to tell the students that are sitting on the other side of this table that I was sitting in that chair, you know, six years ago. And I'm sitting on the opposite side of the spectrum now interviewing them. Right, Aaron? Thank you very much. I'm really happy to see where the program has gone. Um, and now, you know, 150 plus companies and we're at City Hall, which is, you know, it's a testament to what this program has done and it's a testament to the success that it's had with other people because that obviously people are investing in this program because they feel like it's contributing to the better future, not only for the students, but for themselves because this is the workforce that's going to get integrated into all these companies. I do think that the narrative will change with industry once we continue to educate them and tell them who we're working with and what kind of students that they can tap into. Because if you think about the talent pipeline that we have here in the Silicon Valley, organizations are going to be lining up to get more in touch with work-based learning opportunities. I think it's recognizing that there is a need and that there are really good ways to give back. So I think that's why all of our companies have decided that these kind of programs like a high tech, you are just giving back and getting involved with the community is the best way to make those connections. That's where I think you get the buy-in and you get what you need from everybody.